up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Zach Mayfield. Good to meet ya. For the past week, I've been shooting with the A6400 like crazy. It's a really cool little camera, so I wanted to share my findings with you guys, share my thoughts, and do a little review on it, so let's do it. Let's start with the design of the Sony A6400. The first thing I noticed was the lack of sensor stabilization in this camera really produces shaky images, especially because the body of the camera is so light and small, when you're holding it, it's just, it's pretty dang shaky. I ended up pairing it with the Sigma 18 to 35 and an EF adapter. So that made it a little heavier and a little bit more stable, which I ended up liking a lot. Also the screen on the camera isn't great. It's not terrible. You can manually adjust the brightness and jack it up a little bit. It could be better, but I mean, it's a mirrorless camera screen. It's not gonna be perfect anyway. What I love is this camera has so many different color profiles that you can try out and test out. Me personally, I shoot a lot of log footage I really love color grading and just manipulating things and changing things I'm a control freak and when you're shooting in a log profile the focus peaking is a lot harder to use especially outside for this review I shot mostly s log 3 it was really hard to focus when I was looking at the screen it was really hard to see the focus peaking. I love the idea that Sony implemented a flip up screen but I wish it was just a normal tilty screen like you can do whatever you want with it. It's so nice. If you want to flip the screen all the way up and have a microphone on, you can barely see the screen. So to compensate for that, I took the windscreen off of my microphone. So now we're trying the 1080. And you can still kind of see so you can compose and make sure you're in focus, but it's just, it's still difficult to see the screen. One way to fix that problem is just to buy the small rig a6300 cage because it has a microphone mount on the right side of the camera so you could still have a microphone right on the camera and have the screen flipped up all the way and it's still like small form factor the battery life on this camera was honestly pretty decent i expected it to be worse when i went and shot downtown nashville the other night i only had one battery on me and i walked around with the camera on the entire time it didn't die also it has insanely good autofocus i personally didn't get to test it very much because i have an ef adapter so I'm using all my Sigma lenses, but there's tons of videos out there showing how insanely good the autofocus is, so we already know that works. Okay, let's move on to the image quality of this camera. The stuff I'm shooting right now is in Log, S-Log 3, and I'll, I'll try out some of the other picture profiles too, but I like the log. Hey, the dog's making logs too. God bless. The 4K on this camera looks really, really good. So the sensor is 6K and then it downsamples into a 4K image. So all that oversampling of the pixels just makes it look all sharp and pretty and gorgeous. Unfortunately, in 4K, the rolling shutter is poop nation. It's really jello-like and kind of sucks, but if you can keep your hand steady, it's not too much of an issue. Just be careful with it. Since I'm new to Sony, I tested all the picture profiles and I freaking love S-Log3. The dynamic range of S-Log3 is really nice. I did one test where I exposed correctly, like looking right into the sun, and then I intentionally overexposed and tried to recover and also intentionally underexposed and tried to recover the shadows. I think shooting S-Log3 is a really good bet if you wanna get the cinematic look as everybody talks about. It just looks nice because it has a lot of dynamic range and flexibility. I did this test where I filmed a leaf on a tree. It was very intense. I shot the first segment in 120 frames per second and the second one in 60 frames per second, both in 1080. The 60 frames per second version was significantly sharper. You can see it in the edges of the leaf. Those edges are just a lot more sharp than the 120 frames per second. I would shoot 1080, 60 frames per second as the maximum frame rate on this camera. You still get that 40% slow motion. Looks really nice, it's pretty sharp. I wouldn't go above that. So we did some low light testing in my studio setup with a good light. So I wanted to do like a real life run and gun low light situation just on the street. So it's the Sigma 18 to 35 and the camera and whatever light I have.
how the 1080 24 frames per second looks at 3200 ISO. And this is how the 4K looks at 24 frames per second. The 1080 is only 50 megabits per second. 4K 24 is 100 megabits per second. So I'm sure it looks better. It's 10,000 ISO on 4K 24 frames per second. No idea how it looks. Here's my overall thoughts on the Sony A6400. The images coming out of this camera overall are really nice. I actually really like them, especially for how inexpensive this camera is. The ISO performance on this camera is really, really good. I'm used to the Panasonic GH5, which I never go above 2000, and even 2000 looks pretty noisy sometimes. So the fact that I could go up to 10,000 with this camera was pretty mind blowing. This is just a great vlogging camera. It's awesome for running and gunning and doing adventure or travel, anything that you need a small form factor, but still great image quality. I think this is the go-to camera right now for that kind of stuff. This camera could even work for people wanting to get into more beginner level cinematography, like music videos or weddings. I think it's a great starter camera. If you wanna get into strictly cinematography and not really like vlogging or YouTube kind of stuff, I wouldn't get this camera. I would get something more like the old trusty GH5 here, or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, that camera's awesome, or even the Sony a7 III or a7S II. But overall, this camera is really cool. I think it lives up to the hype, and I would definitely recommend it. I think it's cool. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and checking out my channel. Please subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. Maybe like the video, and if there's some sort of like Liberty Bell on this page, maybe ring that too so you get the notifications. And if you really like my content, please consider becoming a patron. I have a personal podcast and bonus vlogs that go up on my channel, as well as shout outs for all my patrons at the end of my videos. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. Cue the patron song! Chris House, Jennifer Mayfield, Jared McCoskey, Regan Carrier, Tyler Beakley, Perry Mulder, Josh Carlin, Banks Nash, Jonathan Lane, Tony Stanton, Kyle Schaefer, Hannah Markley, Jason Hackworth, Andrew, Michael Mayfield, Kevin Johnson, Devin Nicole, Brandon Anderson, Christian Reddle, Noah Watson, Elisha Ruman, Thought Ray, Brandon Steger, and Michael Weeble. Thank you guys so much for being patrons. You're paying my bills. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you kind of are. Thanks for keeping my lights on, keeping my heat on. I appreciate you guys so much. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. Oh. <laughs>